Hey guys, this is Miss Garner, and this is a quick video to help you with Pythagorean theorem um, the second week. So first, a quick review from last time. Um, what is a right triangle? So remember, Pythagorean theorem only works with right triangles, and a right triangle has a right angle, which remember is 90 degrees. So one of your angles in your triangle will be 90 degrees. Um, this is shown with a box in the corner. So if you see a triangle and it has a box in the corner, that means it's 90 degrees, it is a right triangle. The second one, how can you tell which side of the triangle is the hypotenuse? Um, the hypotenuse is the side that is opposite the right angle. So you can think of it, the two legs, A and B, they form your right angle. Those are the two sides that make that box. Um, the hypotenuse does not touch your right angle. So it is opposite from it. And then the third one, what is the Pythagorean theorem? Um, so just a reminder, the Pythagorean theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c. So your leg squared plus your other leg squared equals your hypotenuse squared. So that's a review from last week. Those are three major things you should have taken away um, and remember last week you were given A and B. You were given the two legs and you were asked to find the hypotenuse. Um, so this slide kind of recaps what, what we did last week. Um, every single time we use this formula here, the Pythagorean theorem, and we solved for C. We were solving for that hypotenuse. This week, however, we are gonna be given the hypotenuse and a leg and we wanna solve for the other leg. So here's the theorem we're used to using. And this week, we're going to be using a slightly different one. If you see the second yellow box at the bottom there, notice that that is also the Pythagorean theorem. It's just been rearranged. So instead of solving for C, this time we're actually going to be solving for B. So first, how do I get from this first equation to the second equation? I notice that my first one, C, is isolated. I'm solving for my hypotenuse. The second one, B is isolated. I'm solving for the leg. So all I did was I said, I wanna move this A squared so that's over with the C. I want the B to be by itself. And I do that by subtracting it. So I'm gonna subtract A squared from both sides. And when that happens, A squared minus A squared goes away, it equals zero. So I'm left with B squared equals c squared minus a squared, which if you look down below, that's exactly what we have for our other formula. Okay, so you don't need to solve a problem like that. I just wanted to show you guys how we're getting this revised version. So whenever you're given the hypotenuse and you're actually solving for one of the legs, you're gonna use this slightly different version of that Pythagorean theorem. So here's an example. Um, if I look at my right angle here, I always like to draw these arrows that show my two legs. So here are the two sides that formed the right angle, right? Here's the box. Um, so I know those are my legs. So A equals three and B, I don't know what it is. That's my missing side. So that's gonna be what I'm solving for. The side that is opposite the right angle. So if you go opposite, that's my hypotenuse. So five is C. That's my hypotenuse. So once again, I'm gonna be using that slightly different version of the Pythagorean theorem. I'm gonna do my hypotenuse squared minus the leg squared, and that will end up being the other leg squared. Okay, so notice the big difference here when you're given the hypotenuse is we're no longer adding. This has become a subtraction problem. So what this looks like is my hypotenuse is five, so I get five squared minus the leg, three squared, and that's gonna equal my other leg squared, so B squared. At this point, you just need to simplify. So five squared, which is five times five, equals 25. Three squared, which is three times three, equals nine. So I get 25 minus nine equals B squared, um, and now I'm gonna subtract. So 25 minus nine equals 16. Um, and that's still equal to B squared. Remember my last step, whenever I'm doing these Pythagorean theorem problems, my last step is to take the square root. 
And I do this because I don't want it to be B squared. I only care about B. So when I take that square root, it gets rid of the square. So I get B equals the square root of 16. Uh, remember, this is one problem that you can do in your calculator, um, and you should get four. B equals four. Um, so this is what our missing side is. B is equal to four. And I can double check, right? This side should be less than your hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is always the longest, which it is. All right, so the big difference, guys, last week when we were given the two legs, we took their squares and then added them together before taking the square root. This week, since we're given the hypotenuse, we're going to do the hypotenuse squared minus the leg squared. And then same as last week, take that square root. All right, so here's one more example. Here's slide six. Um, once again, if you look at our picture here, you see that our two legs, one of them is missing, right? A can equal six, but that other leg is missing. So B is gonna be what we're solving for. Um, and we're given the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse in this case, it's opposite the right angle is 15. That's gonna equal C. I'm gonna do this problem with a slightly less steps um, just to kind of show you the nuts and bolts. So you're always gonna take your hypotenuse squared, so 15 squared, and you're gonna subtract your leg squared, so six squared. Um, a little hint here, guys, it's always gonna be the bigger number minus the smaller number. So 15 squared gives you 225. So that's just doing 15 times 15 minus six squared, which is six times six equals 36. Um, at this point, I just need to subtract. So I'll do 225 minus 36. That gives me 189. And then remember my last step is I'm going to take the square root. So when I do the square root of 189, I'm gonna do this on my calculator. So web 2.0 calculator, this is a good one to use if you don't like using your cell phone. Square root 189. We see it's this big long decimal. Um, so whenever it's a decimal that never ends, you're gonna stop after the thousand spot. So after three numbers after the decimal. So 13.747. Is going to be what my missing side is. So remember, the side that I was looking for is B. That's what we're solving for. So B equals 13.747. So just a reminder, guys, if you're given the two legs, A and B, you'll end up adding. If you're given this hypotenuse and a leg, you're going to end up subtracting. So we're still using the Pythagorean theorem. Um, this is just a slightly different version of it because we are given the hypotenuse this time.